Hello, and welcome to Math Matters. I'm Mrs. Halpin, and today we are going to make observations and interpret data shown in a circle graph. For this lesson, you will need paper and a pencil or something else to write with. A calculator would be helpful, but it is not necessary. We'll pause for a moment while you gather those materials. Now that you're ready, let's get started. There are two learning goals for today's lesson. We will have one math goal and one portrait of a graduate goal. Let's take a look at today's math goal first. I am learning to make observations and interpret data shown in a circle graph. By the end of today's lesson, I hope you begin to use estimation, reasoning, and your calculator as tools to help you understand circle graphs. Our portrait of a graduate goal is focused on becoming a creative and critical thinker. Our goal for today is that you can say why you think an idea is a good one. That means you use your learning and background knowledge to state if, some, if you think something is a good idea. This usually requires some bravery, so try to be brave. What do you notice? What do you wonder? This graph is about favorite ice cream flavors. How does this change your interpretation? What might you be noticing or wondering now? You might be noticing that half the graph is purple. So half of the survey participants voted for the same flavor. You might be wondering, hmm, what flavors of ice cream are represented on this circle graph anyways? Here is a key of the ice cream flavors that represent each category on the circle graph. Are you surprised? Do you think if your class voted on ice cream flavors, the graph would look similar or do you think it would look different? You may be wondering, who was the survey even given to? Who voted on these ice cream flavors? 200 students from Clear Lake Elementary School were given this survey. The circle graph displays the results. You might be thinking, this circle graph is not showing me the percentage of students that voted for each flavor of ice cream. You're right, it's not showing us that yet. Let's look at the relationships on this graph a little bit closer to see how we can determine the percentage of each flavor. Let's start with chocolate because we can easily see that it is one half or 50% of the graph. Now let's move on to mint chocolate chip. That looks like one fourth or 25% of the graph. So now I have 75% of the graph accounted for with two flavors of ice cream. This tells me that vanilla, strawberry, and Oreo make up 25% of the rest of the graph. What relationships do you see between these three categories, vanilla, strawberry, and Oreo? You might be noticing that the blue and pink categories or fractions of the circle look equivalent. They are the exact same size. And the gray category that represents Oreo ice cream is half the size of the pink or the blue. Hmm, so if I break up the 25%, I can see that 10% of the students voted for vanilla and strawberry. 
and only 5% of the students voted for Oreo. If I find the sum of all my percentages, I can see that the sum is 100%. Circle graphs are, al are always out of 100%. All of the categories should always add to 100%. We know the percentage that represents each category. However, we still don't know how many students voted for each category. Let's try to figure that out next. Let's look at what we know. We know that the chocolate represents 50% of the circle graph. 50% of the students surveyed voted for chocolate ice cream. If 200 students were surveyed, I can break the graph into two equal pieces. One half of 200 or 200 divided by two is equal to 100. 100 students voted for chocolate. Now let's look at mint chocolate chip. 25% of the students voted for mint chocolate chip. So again, I know if my whole represents 200 students, I can take one fourth of 200 or I can think about it as 200 divided by four. When I break 200 in, when I break 200 into four equal sections, I can see that one fourth is equal to 50. 50 students voted for mint chocolate chip. I know vanilla represents 10% of the circle. Hmm, so I need to think about one tenth of 200. I can split my whole into 10 equal parts. When I do that, I can see the 200 split into 10 equal parts will give me 20. One tenth of 200 or 200 divided by 10 is equal to 20. 20 students voted for vanilla. And since I know vanilla and strawberry have the same percentage of votes, I also know that 20 students voted for strawberry. Lastly, I know that Oreo represents 5% of the vote. Think about the relationships we've discussed so far. How might those relationships help you determine how many students represent 5% of the vote? If you recognize that 5% is half of 10%, you might have thought about it as 10 is half of 20. When we add the number of students that voted for each category, we should get 200 because that represents the total number of students surveyed. The sum of 100 plus 50 plus 20 plus 20 plus 10 is equal to 200. So now that we know the percentage of votes for each category, and we know the number of students that voted for each category. What is the same? What is different? Take a moment to jot down your observations and interpretations of these circle graphs. Let's talk about some things that are the same. Both circle graphs show data from middle school students on the after school activity they participate in. Both graphs have the same categories as shown by the key at the bottom of the slide. Both graphs have five categories or sections that the circle graph is split into. You may have noticed that both graphs show the same fraction or percent of the students that are on the debate team. I can see that 25% of the students, of the seventh grade students 
and 25% of the eighth grade students participate in the debate team. However, the number of students that participated in the debate team are different. Let's talk a little bit more about what's different. Although some of the percentages look similar, the total number of students surveyed in seventh grade is different from the total number of students that were surveyed in eighth grade. If I add all of the categories in the seventh grade circle graph, I can see that 60 students were surveyed. If I add all of the categories in the eighth grade circle graph, I can see that 80 students were surveyed. So even though 25% of each grade level participates in the debate team, it is not the same number of students because the total number of students is different. Let's take a deeper look at the circle graph that represents the eighth grade students. So this time, we know the number of students that participate in each activity. Let's use that information along with what we know about rational numbers to find the percent of students that participate in each activity. Mathematicians usually start with what they know when we solve problems. I think it would be easiest to start with the debate team since I can see that it represents one fourth of the circle graph. 20 out of 80 students participate in the debate team. I can divide the numerator and denominator by 20 twentieths, which is really just equivalent to one whole. This will help me simplify the fraction to one fourth. One fourth is equivalent to 25 hundredths, which represents 25% of the circle graph. Let's look at the drama club. 32 out of 80 students participate in the drama club. I can see that it's close to, but not quite one half. Again, if I divide the numerator and denominator by one whole, or in this case, eight eighths, I can see that 32 eightieths is equivalent to four tenths. Hmm, well, I know that four tenths is also equivalent to 40 hundredths, so I can write the decimal as 0 0.4 or 0 0.40. And I know that 4 tenths or 40 hundredths is also equivalent to 40%. So 40% of eighth grade students participate in the drama club. Let's look at track. I can see eight out of 80 students participate in track. Again, I can divide the numerator and denominator by eight eighths or one whole to simplify. The fraction eight eightieths is equivalent to one tenth. I can write one tenth with a one in the tenths place. I can name this number as one tenth or ten hundredths. And I know this value is equivalent to 10%. Since track and baseball have the same amount of students, they also represent the same percent of students. Each category has 10% of eighth grade student participation. Lastly, let's look at soccer. I can see the category labeled soccer has a slightly larger percent than track and baseball, but a smaller percent than the debate team. So my percent should be more than 10%, but less than 25%. 12 out of 80 students played soccer. I can divide the numerator and denominator by four fourths or one whole to simplify the fraction. 12 eightieths is equivalent to three twentieths. Hmm, this fraction is not instantly recognizable as a decimal. I think I should use the calculator. The calculator is a helpful tool mathematicians can use to solve problems. I'm going to type in three divided by 20 into my calculator. I'll give you some time to do that as well. When I entered three divided by 20 into my calculator, I see the decimal equivalent is 15 hundredths. And I know that 15 hundredths is equivalent to 15%.
When we find the sum of each column, I can see that the fractions add up to 100 one hundredths or one whole. The decimals have a sum of 1.00 and the percentages equal 100%. So now we know the percentage of students that participate in each activity. Let's take some time to make observations about this data. The graph on the left shows the percentage for each category. The whole represents 100%. The graph on the right shows the number of students that participate in each category. The whole represents 80 students because a total of 80 students were surveyed. The Student Government Board is using this data to make recommendations to the principal about how they can organize and spend money on after-school programs next year. If you are a member of the student government, what would you recommend to the principal? I'll give you a little time to think about it. Creative and critical thinkers can say why they think an idea is a good one. What ideas did you have? There are so many ways you can interpret this graph and use the data to support your ideas as creative and critical thinkers. Remember, graphs always tell a story. You might have thought that the drama club, club should receive the most money because it has the most student interest. Or maybe you're wondering how to recruit more people for baseball or track. How could you use the data to convince your principal that Drama Club deserves the most funding because it has the largest number of students, or that baseball should get more funding because there doesn't seem much interest and you want the program to grow? Let's revisit our math goal for today. I am learning to make observations and interpret data shown in a circle graph. What is one thing you learned today? What might you be wondering? I encourage you to share what you learned or what you're wondering with a family member or a teacher. Our portrait of a graduate goal was to say why you think an idea is a good one. You had an opportunity to think about this when you were thinking from the perspective of a school government board member. How can you interpret and analyze data all around you, either to learn or make good choices? How might you use the data to help you tell a story or support your ideas. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of Math Matters. I'm Mrs. Halpin. I hope you have a great day and keep on counting.